Uh -huh. So we are back. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is your arrow function with just a single parameter. Now remember what I told you. If there is no parameter, you can't omit omit the bracket. You know the bracket I'm talking about. This bracket here. You can't omit it. If there's if there is it has a single parameter, of course you can omit the bracket. Then if you have more than one par parameter, you can't omit the bracket. And if you just have one line of code, right? You can omit return statement. You don't need to use return statement. Let's say for instance now, okay, we have this function and this time around we are not console login. Instead, what we are doing is to return the name. Right? Let's say we are returning name. Now in this case, we don't even need to use return for our arrow function. We don't need to use return. This arrow automatically we do the work of return. So we just need to do this and then we'll get what we are looking for by just calling this one. But if you if your function has multiple lines, more than one line, of course you can't use return. And you can't use this one. You can't rely on this one to return the result because this one is not intelligent enough to know what you really want to return. So in that case, you have to use the return keyword. But if what you are returning is just one thing, let's say just your function and then what you are returning, then this arrow can serve the work of a return. So you don't need to use your return. So let's look at another one. Let's say we have a function add. Let's say we are adding two numbers, x, y or three numbers f z isn't it and then this one is returning x plus y plus z so in this case now if we call our function add and we pass in the three uh, parameters right which is 287 that's 2 plus 8 10 plus 7 17 isn't it so if we do for an arrow function of course we need to store it inside a variable we can add make the variable const at 2 equal to remember now we have three parameters and what are they x y and z isn't it and then remember our arrow now if you look at it here we just have one line statement which is what return x y z so we, we don't need to use this word keyword return what we just do is x plus y plus z so and you can see what do we have okay we have not called it yet sorry so now let's call our function in this case we store it inside at two so we'll call at two and then we'll pass in three parameters let's say this time around we'll pass in two let's say one and then five so what do we have you see we have eight which is two plus one three three plus five eight so this is it so I don't know, is there any question? No question. All right, all right. So let's look at, okay, what if in a situation where we have multiple lines? You know, I told you, you have to use a return. So let's say for instance now, what we want to do here, isn't it, is to calculate, let's say function calc, isn't it? And this calc now, or let's say cal, and this cal now we take in, uh, x y isn't it and what is going to do it will take some const sum right then sum will be x plus y it will take in um, let's say difference difference now will be x minus y then it will also do multiplication that's more x multiply by y right and then it also take div which is x divided by y then this time around is going to now return in array sum div or let's say let it return dictionary instead uh, i know people don't like working with the dictionary let's start working with dictionary so it will return sum it will return div it will return more and then there it will return diff okay yes okay diff and diff okay so now let's call the function cal and see so we are calling it and we are passing two parameters let's say 10 and 5 now what do we have you see sum is what 15 
of course if you do 10 plus 5 is 15 difference is what 5 of course if you do 10 minus 5 is 5 multiplication is what 50 of course if you do 10 multiply by 5 you have 50 and then div divide is what 2 of course if you do 10 divided by 5 you have 2 so now if we are to do this translate this into an arrow function we are going to have remember we have to store it inside a variable so we'll call this variable cal2 and then equal to remember what we are we said you have to have this bracket since we are dealing with two parameters we have our x we have our y then in this case the next you bring in your arrow now because this code is not just a one line code it contains several lines of code of course this arrow will not be intelligent enough to know what to return so in this case we have to use the return keyword and then i'll just copy what is inside here right and then paste it here now of course what we need to do next so you can see that here we do not rely on this one to return our uh, result to us we have to explicitly call the return so in this case instead of using a dictionary let me use uh, a, an array to return our answer so we have sum we have div we have more and we have div right so now of course i need to call this function which is what calc we name it cal2 isn't it so we call it passing two parameters so these two parameters you can say 15 and 5 right now you can see 15 plus 5 will give us 20 uh 15 uh, minus 5 will give us 10 15 multiplied by 5 will give us 75 and then 15 divided by 5 will give us 3 so uh i don't know does anyone have any question on arrow functions no okay there's no question i'm just taking my time to okay. uh -huh. so uh, in your like after the pld if you have time or even tomorrow thank god this weekend you can still go over it you'll find out that man arrow functions are, are are nice honestly so let's look at this uh one the question they gave us on arrow function here they say rewrite the following standard function to use es es6 arrow syntax of the function add it will be an anonymous function after so you see where they made mention of anonymous function so what they mean by it will be an anonymous function is that which functions have did they say okay this is the function right i mean which function did they say we should rewrite the function is inside the, if you look at okay is the function the inside option, that's this yeah. one here right yeah okay okay good so of course with all what we have done you should understand what to do so here i will just copy this one come to this place right paste it then this one will be reserved for my code so i'll come here copy this code right and they say we should make changes to this function inside so of course if you look at what we have here good to the add function so remember why they say it's anonymous remember i know i told you that arrow functions you don't use name for them you can only equate them to a name but you don't have name so here instead of this add now and this function will do away with them both the add and the function will do away with them then next what we introduce is now our arrow and then this is it so we have successfully converted it into an arrow function all right so any any question No, okay okay so good now parameter default now if you if you observe you find out that we have done something like this in python what it means by parameter default right uh, because i was reading on it and then i got to realize how it's very important for when most especially when defining a function to have a default parameter so let's say we have this function let me use arrow function right and then we have like x and y right and we are expecting it to return x plus y since it's addition isn't it so here let me call the function add now you can see that if i pass in just a single parameter inside this function right you see that you see what is returning not a number and if i did not pass in any parameter 
you can see what is returning also not a number until i have to or i must until i pass in two parameters before you see that the function will work so that is where this function parameters parameter default comes in now instead of just having my parameter i'm going to give them each a default value so if i give this one a default value of zero i give this one a default value of zero now in a situation where i just call the function without providing any parameter you see that what is going to return to me is zero because it will take zero as the default value of x and it will take zero as the default value of y so when it now do zero plus zero it will return zero so in a situation where i also just use a single number let's say 20 it's going to return that 20 because why it's going to take this 20 as x so x now will be replaced uh, this zero will be replaced by 20 so x will be 20 but why because it's just one i, I supplied why we still reserve zero so when it comes here when we now do zero when we now do 20 plus zero you know it will still give us 20 so that's why we're having this and when i now decide to add three the third one let's say uh 10 or let's say five this one now we replace the 20 we replace zero in x and then the five now we replace zero in y so returning it we have 20 plus 5 which here is giving us 25 so that is like the summary of what this parameter default is all about and as i see here if you look at what they ask us in this task is a condensed the internals of the following function to one line without changing the name of each function or variable hint the key here to define default parameter values for the so here now if you look at it here they say if x this is equal to define and this is equal to one define okay let me copy this one then copy the this thing so that we'll, we'll run it together so just like i say try and get this on js honestly to help you that's what i normally use to test my code before even i push because you know imagine you pushing code it did not work you entering editor to check but this one as you are typing you are seeing the response so now what they mean by this according to what is here right according to this code they wrote it simply means that if you call this function right without providing any parameter the initial parameter eh issue it will take it as undefined so in that case what you should do because look at it this is x this is initial number right of course initial number this is the second parameter which is expansion 1989 and this is the third uh, parameter which is expansion 20 so it's saying that this one of course will always be given to you but in a situation where this one is not provided what it will return is undefined so here they are like if this one is reading undefined that's is reading ah they did not give me number then make it 89 so let's say here now let's say this one is three this one is eight and this one is nine so what will happen is that if you supply just three here it will check it to see that ah, this one there's no number this one there, this one is not giving this one is not giving that's in this situation so in that case what you to do it will do three this one now since it's not giving it will give it the value of eight and this one since it's not give it to give it the value of one so in that case we're going to have three plus eight which of course to give us eleven plus one which will give us twelve in this case of course this one is provided so this one does not will not work so the next one that will work is this one because in this case the third one which is this is not provided so instead it will be given one so you now have 34 plus 3 which here to give you that seven plus this one then you have 38 so now what they are asking us to do is that we should reduce this one to a one line of code so if you look at this one this one is an attempt to give anyone that is not giving an a value to give it an initial value so in this case we don't need all these ones here the only thing we need is to now give the initial values to both of them which of course we are giving this one eight and then we're also giving this one one so in this case you can see that we have the same thing 12 38 41 because when you provide three only it will take by default this one as eight this one as one and then what you are now going to have you now have uh three plus eight plus one which is 12. in a situation where you give the two this one is not giving you take this one as the default value which is one so you have 34 plus three which is 37 plus one you have 38 then when three of them are giving it will ignore the default value 
and use the value given which is 34 plus 3 37 37 plus 4 41 so i don't know is there any any question so, this one is somehow confusing for me okay it's somehow confusing yeah. okay uh, um, last place where the past and three arguments okay this one yes. okay okay let me explain let me remove this console log it's because of let me remove the console log don't mind here like instead of them to be using small small function we're going to use function that pass our power and let me remove this one because we don't need the export in this case so this is it they declared all instead of this self right let me just name the function sum so now what what is happening here is that we have a function called sum and the function has three parameters which is initial number expansion 18 uh, 1989 expansion 2019 now initially let me undo to so, sorry bro sorry okay me. i i guess now uh, i made a mistake I, i've forgotten the function is taking three arguments okay and okay was, i was thinking it's two two okay <laughs> okay 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 it's three arguments thanks thanks i understand now all right all right so, no problem so uh let's let's go to the next one so now good now if you look at this rest parameter we'll treat this rest parameter but also keep this one in mind spread now there is little to know the difference between spread and rest is very very thin and i think why they did it like that is because of some of us you know if you want to sleep you just spread your leg and your hand based on most especially if the bed is big uh -huh. so they work hand in hand but somehow different so when you talk of rest parameter, I don't know if you guys remember arc, arc and quarks, arcs and quarks in Python. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, keyword argu yeah, argument, yeah, yeah. multiple where you can pass in multiple number of arguments. Yes. Good. So that is what this rest parameter is talking about. So let's say for instance now, right? We have add don't mind me i'm just using add add okay let me use multiply this time around we have multiply function and now the issue now with this multiply is that the person that is coming to use the function we don't even know whether he is using one parameter whether the parameter he wants to multiply is one or is two or three we are not really sure of the number so we can now say okay if that's the case let's do it in such a way he can pass in multiple arguments so in that case now we can say okay the first one can be x then the next one we don't know how many is going to pass in so we'll make it dot 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 three dots and then give it a number let's say here now i'll give it x so you know in python is star you do something like this star x but in javascript yeah. you use dash 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 now what you are trying to say it will take in one parameter for sure the parameter must be one the function must take in at least a single parameter but however he can also accommodate as much parameter as it has been given i don't know if you guys get it yeah good yeah good. yeah good so now in this case we can ask okay what do we want to do okay we want it to return um okay so if you are talking about a uh, spread right i'm coming let me let me uh, make something clear if you are talking about spread normally what spread does right is that i i think it's it takes all the elements and then put them inside an array although i'm not sure but let's use this and check now what i'm going to do i'm going to return x in this function and then let's call the function so we have mall and then let's pass in at least let's say now what do you see five six and what eight so you can see that it will take in a single now this one you can't have something like this oh it will return error are you serious 
He did not return at all. Wow. Ah, where did I, which material did I not read? The, because the material I read, right, the material was like, okay, you have to have a definite argument before you can have this multiple argument. But from here, it seems we don't even need the definite argument. So, yeah, now. I, I saw something like that. Okay, you saw something like that too, right? So, talk. Maybe they have made an uh, improvement. You know, they used to update some of these things. Maybe they have updated it. So, now, what he's going to do is that all those arguments you are providing is going to put them inside a list. The reason why I start like this is so that you understand in the situation where probably you want to multiply all the arguments together. You have to treat the argument like a list. So let's say what we want to do is add, right? Let me change it to add so that I will not be seeing big number. So let me change it to add. So let's say we want to add all these arguments together. Irrespective of the arguments given, we want to add them together. It means we have to treat it as a list. Now, how do we treat it as a list? Of course, we can use our loop. That's one way of doing it. Use a loop. We can use map map function if we want we can use so i don't know which one do you guys feel will be better here for us to use should we use a for loop should we use uh uh, uh, uh yes should we use loop should we use map so which one do you feel we should use here okay. hmm? so okay so let's use a for loop right now, if we are using a for loop, of course, there's one other thing I want you to know, which is what? Len of. Okay. Uh, oh, Lord, help me. Array dot length. Good. Ax dot length. Good. 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 Ax dot length. So, let me, let me return a list instead. So, if we are using a for loop, right we can take advantage of this parameter ax dot length isn't it now how do we take advantage of this ax dot length is easy from here we can see okay we need to iterate we need to move in between all the parameters provided while adding them so here we can ask okay sum we say uh let sum remember we can't use const here because we want to be adding everything together equal to zero right now we can now see okay oh, for let i right equal to zero i will be less than what will be this one the length of the array of course the length of the array will be x good dot length right then i plus plus so in this case now what do we want to do for every iteration what do we want to do we want to now add it to the sum and what are we adding to the sum the element you know the array to assess element of an array you have to use the index so now we'll do x at index i right and then at the end of everything what we want to do is to return our sum so now what do we have here we have 20 of course 1 plus 5 is 6 6 plus 6 is 12 12 plus 8 is 20 now if you like you can keep on adding argument you see that it will just keep on adding it for you are you seeing it so that is where this one comes in your rest uh parameter so that is what is actually used for so i don't know does anyone have any question mm. okay okay so this is the the distinct use of rest parameter so let's look at the exercise they give us concerning rest parameter so they say modify the following function to return the number of arguments passed to it using the rest parameter syntax so here they say we should modify this one this is an example they run so but me i'm going to copy i'm going to use this one the test file first of all i'll paste it here 
then i'll bring in the function the access to modify where is it so this is the function the access to modify right so i'll bring it in now they say we should modify it such a way that any amount of function it carries it will return the length so here now of course to modify it we use our rest parameter ax i normally use ax so that we know okay that is argument short form of argument so while inside the function what we need to do is to return our ax dot length so you can see for this one we pass in just a single parameter that's why it's giving us one for this one we pass in one two three four four parameters that's why it's giving us four so uh any question no that was straightforward no question okay good 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 so now we are now in spread now if you remember what i told you i told you that okay rest and spread they are somehow similar they have similarities it's more like twin brothers so now let's see what they say they say using spread syntax concatenate two arrays and this is blah 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 so now rest why rest is for argument right spread is for array dictionary or any object that have iterable items what i mean by iterable items any any object that have items that you can move from one item to another so let's look at what we are saying okay let's say for instance i have an array here const mm, name isn't it and then i have uh gideon i have emmanuel somebody should give me another name john good john isn't it yeah good and let's say i want to copy these names now the easiest way to copy this name is to use what we call spread now how will i do that do it i can say const new names and then what am i going to do dot 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 name now permit me sorry i need to put it inside an array because why must i put inside an array what i'm doing here for this spread what is going to do is going to go over this array one element after another and as it's going over them is cop is bringing them inside this place so it will come to this first one the first one is gideon it will copy gideon and bring it here go to the second one emmanuel copy emmanuel bring it here go to the third one john copy john bring it here so in this case if i call the new uh this thing array what do you see see this one even separated itself do you see what this one did he separated each of these yeah. numbers oh uh, don't mind don't mind it even separated it <laughs> so but, but i don't really know why uh, i don't really know why he separated it but uh, it's, it's a I think if you put it inside normal bracket or so. Okay, okay. Let me let me I'm check. Not sure. yeah, so we can try now. Is 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 coding that we are coding? So we we'll always try. <laughs> ah, to. <talk>. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, see, you even gave it index. So. Mm. Unique index. Mm. Wow. So, That's so, why it's a JavaScript. It's, it's, <laughs> yes. It's know, just unpredictable honestly so you can see you can see so now let's say for instance we now have two uh two this thing let's say name one or this time around let's use number since name is showing or shaking let's say even number right so even number we'll talk of maybe two four six eight right and then let's say odd number so odd number now we say um one three five uh, five seven isn't it so now let's say we want to copy even number and odd number inside another array that is just called number now what we are going to do here is to use our spread how do we use spread that dot 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 odd number comma dot 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 even number 
and then here let's now call our new array so the new array is number so what do you see you see that it copied it for the odd one three five seven for the even two four six eight so just like i said it's not only array is any object that is iterable so it means even objects can be copied using spread and how can object be copied let's say we have const uh okay uh yes const info right and this info now let's say we have name uh name let's say pld right and then uh, let's say is it country now we even use let me just use symbol i don't even know how to use it <laughs> Court. Eh? Court. okay That's good cohort i love that so cohort let's say 15 okay it's a number yes yeah, so let's say 15 isn't it and then let's say we have another one const let's say this time around is uh what should we even name it okay track uh -huh. Const track, so let's say um, uh, front end. Okay, let's say programming, isn't it? Front end. Don't mind me. Uh, then let's say data science. <laughs> right. Back end. Uh -huh. So now. We can also okay const new info right so here now we can copy bring this one uh what is this one they do we can bring this one and this one into this one how using our spread operator dot 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 info comma dot 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 track so here now if we call new info let's see what we have Uh, which missing initial initializer in const declaration okay mm. sorry i think it's supposed to be equal to unexpected token okay eh hey. wow so you can see inside this new info we copied info which is name and quote and then uh, we copied track which is programming and data science so now we have name pld quote 15 programming front end data science back end so you guys see so is anything object array object map anything any iterable object that you can use spread operator for so uh, i hope we are still together yeah okay yeah, yeah. okay so it's the same thing here too i believe everybody can do this yes of uh -huh. course. Uh -huh. so so that at least we'll fasten up i see it's almost nine probably by 9 30 we'll now look at uh what are they calling it um pascal triangle um okay yes then tomorrow we'll see how we can look at promises and the other one so now template literals too i believe we all know how it works yeah we do okay so object property so this object property value shorthand syntax that was what i used in one of the examples i gave that's if if you follow up there's one i used that uh i did something like this we that we made a function we created a function as a function uh info right and then the function that we, uh, sorry we created objects const info isn't it and then we add equal to sorry wait oh, let me see the how the structure of it sorry before i go and do something that uh -huh. so let's just use this one the structure of this one So you can see here, hmm, these are just name it info. All 
I'll remove this export default we don't need it so this one is taking in let's say this is info I'm saying name right age and then probably level level right and then const this one will just say we'll call it uh okay yes let's call this one info and let this one instead be get info uh -huh. so now if you look at okay we'll change this one to, to name 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 and this one h and this h and this one level and this level so now here we now return info yes so that means here we can call our function get info and then we we'll pass across a name let's say alx we we'll pass across age let's say alx is maybe five years old and then we we'll pass across level let's say their level have reached 1000 isn't it so now you can see that this one this name is a key this age here is a key and this level is a key whereas this name here is the value this age is the value and this level is the value and where is the value coming from it's coming from this parameter here from the parameter uh, part of this function so since both key and value are the same thing there's no need of giving it a key so far you have expressed it to be inside this coily bracket it will look at it and by itself it will reevaluate it and give it a key that's equivalent to the name so any place where you're having the key and the value having the same uh variables you don't need to define it this way it's more like a waste of time so what you just need to do just clean the key just leave just name here to leave just h and here to leave just level you still get the same answer you can see the same answer it doesn't change anything so far this one matches with this this matches with this and this matches with this the issue is when any of them do not match it's always throw an error uh -huh. so so far all these three the value matches with this one you don't actually need the key the key will be automatically generated from the value from the variable of the value which is name for this one age for this one and then level for this one so that's what this one is all about so any any question Hello. okay okay so this one no need to create empty objects before adding in property so if you look at if you look at what what uh, they did here right what they actually did here was to create an empty uh, object which is this and then after creating an empty object they now started giving the object value so what they now ask us to do in this start is instead of creating an empty object first before giving it value create it plus the value so this is it let's okay we have an object let me say information right and then this object i want it to take let's say name age name and age you see that i've created it as an empty object here so now to fill in this object i need a key right so for the name now i want to give it the key i want the key to be name and then the name i want it to be pl this right why for the h2 i want to give it a key call h and then i want it to be let's say five now if we come here and we now get info you can see it it has created what we are doing here is to add it so here a we need we we created a key of name for the object and give it a value of pld that's why you are seeing name pld here this one we created a key for the object called age and we give it a value of five that's why you are seeing here so in that tax they're like i don't need to go through this stress that i did here from here from here directly from the point of declaring it i can just give it the key and then the value also comma also the key and then the value so here now if i print info right okay sorry this comma so if i print info you can see 
I still have the same thing. So that's what this task is all about. What they want you to do is to change instead of having all these things now, initialize it here inside of this. So that's what this one is all about. So any any question? question okay okay so uh yes method property so here now he, this one they are talking about uh uh proper uh, methods now i believe we all we have done classes right uh classes methods in python so if you talk of class you talk of a method you know it's more like a method is, is a function but it's just that is a function that is called on a particular class on a particular object so let's say for instance now right we have this object which is info called info and the object have name it has age isn't it now let's say i want it to be that i want a method that once i call that method right the method is going to print out something once i call the method on info or why i call the function on info you know like this one now like if you do normal function let's say you do function add isn't it let's say x y right and then we do return x plus y you know for this function to work now you need to call it 2 comma 3 but the calling of this function now right you know i'm not calling it on anything i'm just calling it on its own so when you are talking of method method two is like function but this time around is a function you are calling on this object itself if you call it alone like this it will not work you have to call it on the object why because you declare the function inside of the object so the function belongs to the object so for the function to to work and for the function to work right you have to declare it on the object it has to identify that ah this is where i'm coming from or else it will not work you have to call it on what it is coming from so from here now this one if you want to add a function there are different ways of actually adding a function to an object or adding a method instead this one is one of the ways you see what they did here you give it a name icon and then the function just like how you declare you know here that's how we declare these variables too so here too we can decide to say uh get info right and then we want to give it a value but this value we want to give this get info now will be a function and what will be the function now the function is going to be function right um we leave have a name let me be sure Coming address to follow this their own. Okay, good. Uh -huh. You should itself. So function, and then what am I going to do? I don't want my function to take in any parameter. Yes, I don't need it to. So here, what am I doing? I want it to return uh for me the string. Which string? Okay. Uh my name is this. I want it to give me this name, right? I am um, I wanted to pass in H here for me. So here we have H yes old. Okay, ah, uh, what is this one? What a very good. Uh -huh. So now this one is a function, however, is a function created inside of an object. So since I created inside of an object, this has become a method. So how do I call this method? If I come here and just call it like this, get info, it will not work. Like nothing is going to work here. Uh, why is it giving me error? Get okay, unexpected token, comma. Uh, uh, okay, sorry, it's here. Yeah. It's here. It's here. You know, in between properties, you need to always put comma. Yeah, you need to always put comma. So now you can see that if you call it just on its own, it will not work. So how can I get it to work? 
simple i have to call it on the object and what is the name of the object info then dot get info now see what happens age is not defined okay let me see that means i need to use the binding the class binding uh, i need to use the class binding so sorry i needed to use the class binding here so for the object you always use this so that to show that you are actually referring to the name inside of the object and here the age inside of the object so you can see it my name is pld i am five years old so now what alx wants you to do is to convert this one to the normal way of creating a method inside an object and the normal way is just to remove this function and this column and leave it like this why in a situation where you want the method to take in a parameter maybe i want this get info to take in name i want to be the one to pass the name for this method i don't want it to take the name of this object then in this case i'll have just name here so when i'm passing it here i need to give it a name so in this place i will, I will not give it like, like s w e so you can see what we have here my name is s w e i am five years old so it can take in parameter and it can eat there's a possibility that so it depends on your choice yeah what you want what you are looking for yeah so so i don't know if if it's clear is it clear yes yeah yes it is okay okay so so that's that's it for this for methods then 